Hi there, Jeep Renegade guy here. Today what we're taking a look at is installing a new roof rack on my car. As you guys may have seen in some of the previous videos that I've done, uh, I did have a Thule roof rack system. However, uh, just recently I added this uh, Saris uh, rear hitch rack to the car, so I no longer need the roof rack for carrying my bikes. So with that being said, uh, what I wanted to do was put a OEM style roof rack onto the car and I looked at a whole bunch of uh, you know, websites looking at used roof rack parts and then of course looking at buying a brand new roof rack from the dealer and it was just really expensive. So what I went ahead and did was I purchased online a roof rack system that is supposed to mimic the OEM roof rack and together we're going to take a look and see exactly you know, both the quality of it as well as how well it works on the car. Now uh, if you want to take a look at the original video of putting my Thule roof rack on a sport car, uh, you can go ahead and click the link down in the description and it's important to note that uh, on the stock uh, you know, sport level car, uh, they actually don't come with roof rails and that's why we're having to go down this process. So if you have a Latitude or you know any of those other models you're not going to have the same issue. Now let me go ahead and cut to taking the original roof rack off and we'll come right back to unboxing the online purchased uh, roof rack for the car. Alright everyone, we've got our roof rack here. Uh, this is uh, was shipped in the US but you can see on the side it's got all the, uh, the Chinese writing on it. But let's go ahead and pop it open, see exactly what's inside. All right, inside of here, looks like we have one of our two roof rails. Go ahead and take a look at this, pull it out of the packaging. You can look at that there. It's got some rubber padding to the bottom of it. You can see the, uh, the two places where the screws are gonna go in. Um, nice black finish on this rack. So we'll put that aside here. Next thing we need to take a look at is our other roof rack. This is obviously for the other side of the car. And you can see it's in a, uh, a similar condition here. Nice looking rack. So we'll place that aside as well. Now as we go in, we're gonna have uh, some hardware here. As you can see, this is gonna be for installing the rack. Pretty nice packaging in here, and then look at that, it's got some instructions as well. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started on this. Now taking a look at the instructions, it's going to be showing us a little bit of information on what we need to be doing here. Uh, it is partially in English here, and then it looks like it's inviting us to do uh, to take the roof rack or roof rail pieces off and that's how it installs. Well, that's interesting. Uh, if you take a look at it there, it actually looks like what it's asking you to do is to go ahead and cut the center portion of the rack and then um, cut off the front and ends of it. As you can see here, it's asking you to uh, kind of lay, it looks like the first section it wants you to cut to 13 centimeters, uh, the third portion to 87 and a half centimeters long. Um, looks like the second and the fourth, those two positions you're cutting and those will get removed and then you have a remaining 13 and a half centimeters is what I'm looking at here. Uh, and that would make sense because if we look at the bottom of the rack here, you can see it actually looks like it places uh, some load onto uh, the underside of the roof. So that's uh, pretty interesting. Let's cut, 
cut to a quick little shot of what these rails look like so you can kind of get a, a close look with me and we'll go from there, get them installed. After taking a look at the rack, you can see that it seems to be really good quality. So as you can see here, the underside of the rack does look like it's really nice. You can see it's got metal all the way through to the mounting points. It's got a couple of locators here that seem to be in good shape. Nice rubber pad uh, in between the plastic of the roof rails and the car's body. And you can tell which one is the left and the right because if you take a look at the front here, you can actually see a notch where that's going to follow in with the body line. So let me go ahead and put one of these up to the roof so you can see what it'll look like. So as you can see, the roof rail already makes a really big difference on how well the Jeep looks. So I've got it installed, uh, or rather just placed on top of the car. And as we take a look at it, you can see the front seems to look really nice attached up to the car properly. You can see there's kind of a, uh, a cut in that rubber uh, spacer, the rubber pad that we had seen before. And when we look in from the top, the screw hole that's actually on top lines up exactly where it should be to go into the car. Uh, underneath this, if we actually roll over the roof rail, what you'll notice is the little grommet will actually attach right into the screw hole there. Same with the front one. And then there's actually this kind of locator piece. It's, it's hard to see because we don't quite have enough light here. Uh, that actually goes into that hole on the body. Now, I wasn't sure what it was saying in the instructions, but it's become clear now. So in the back, where you would have had the original rain gutter going in, you can see that that same locator piece that we were looking at before, uh, that actually needs to slide in right where this plastic clip is. What makes me do wonder is whether or not we're gonna need some real um, double-sided tape to be able to hold down the rear portion of the ring gutter. Now on the back it's the same thing, you've got that rubber pad and the holes do line up pretty much perfect to work with the car. Alright, what I have here is our directions on our cuts for the rear of uh, the ring gutter that I've got uh, up on the roof right now. It's saying we need a cut at about 13 and a half centimeters. So if we measure that out, 13 and a half would leave us uh, right about here. Now, one of the things that we noticed in the rack, is, or when we put the rack onto the car, is that the last clip here uh, will actually not be able to be used. Uh, and that's because when the, uh, the rack actually goes on, it's gonna clip right into that hole. Now, looking at this and wondering, so why do they want it cut so far back? If we go ahead and we take a look at the rear of this rack, you'll notice, so that's the little tab that goes into where that plastic clip comes off, but then we've got another support right at the very end. So we can't allow it to come past where that support is. So let's go ahead and make a mark on our piece of trim. So I'll put the trim back down. You know, this is roughly from the beginning, so I'm gonna go ahead and mark that up as the cut is gonna be at 13 and a half, which is roughly right there. Now, the next cut that we're gonna see is gonna be on the rear. So we've got our cut number four, which that's 44 and a half centimeters. So if we take this, we line it up with that, 44 and a half. We've got to extend our tape measure here. So we're lining that guy right up. 44 and a half is 44.5. Take a look at that. Is right about there. That doesn't quite make sense. 
have to try this out because that's actually right where the screw is going to go in. Now, if we take a look again at the bottom of our rack, you'll notice we really just want to cut it just past where that hole is. So let's go ahead, jump right back up onto the top of the car. And so what I want to do is just past where that is, we're going to actually make the cut right there. And the reason for that is that's still going to allow us to use our uh, clip that's going to go right onto the bottom. That'll actually still snap in to that hole. Now let's take a look at the front. Let's move everything down. If we take a look at the front here, it says our number one position is going to be at 13 centimeters from the front of this cut. So it's asking for us to go right about here. And now let's uh, take a look underneath and see if that makes sense. Yep, it does because remember uh, right there, if we look again back at this guy, it needs to be just behind where the screw goes in. And then on the front, it's gonna be just in front of where this tab is. So let's take a look at that again. So like we said, that's just in front of the tab. I might actually even go back just a little. Let's take a look. No, somewhere in the middle. Somewhere right about there. And then this one needs to be just after the screw hole. We've got the hole right there. So we're gonna cut right about here. So let's go ahead and get this cut. Like that, we've got our three remaining sections, the front section, rear, and then the center portion on the rack. Now before we go ahead and place these parts back onto the roof, uh, you can actually see there's a couple of places where uh, the rack actually needs to have replacement pieces of tape. Now to fix that, I went ahead, went to Home Depot as you can see, purchased up some of this Scotch-Brite extremely strong outdoor tape and then we're going to use good old-fashioned grease lightning and a little bit of elbow grease to get this stuff off. So you do want to make sure that you take the original off if you're able to. I'm going to see if with kind of a knife I'm able to, to take this off. Let's see here. All right, with that, we'll go ahead and take our 3M outdoor tape uh, here, pop it out of the, uh, the package. We've got our tape, and we're gonna go ahead and take this and actually tape up the underside of these parts. Now, I'm just going to basically put the tape exactly where the factory stuff is, and that'll work for us. We'll place this piece right onto the roof. So now that's been applied, let's go ahead and do the center section of the roof and go from there. So we've got the center section of the roof here all ready to go. Go ahead and take our tape. Peel that back. Make sure that we get the clip 
clipped on. So that goes into place. And now we've got our center section on. Last remaining is let's go ahead and clean up the rear here and we'll get that installed as well. Got our double-sided tape. Take that. And that goes right onto the back half of the car. So let's go ahead and put our roof rack on, see how everything lines up for us. Take our roof rail here, put it right up onto the roof. Line everything up. And it looks like our cuts are perfect. So as you can see here, the front went right into place where it should, snaps right in. We've then got our cut for the center portion and then the rear here. Everything seems to have come out great. So our next step is of course, gonna be going ahead and putting the screws in to the top of the rack. But so far, very happy with how it's gone. For each of the spots, we're gonna need a washer a bolt here, and then of course the cap to cover the hole in the roof rail. Uh, it does look like it's a five millimeter bolt to do that. Got a little impact to help with some of the workflow, but uh, let's get this side loaded up. All right, so I've got our screw and our washer. We'll slide that right into the hole there. In there, We've got our little Allen key, which is provided with the rack to get it started. So go ahead and start that. Let's do our next one. So those are placed together, screws right in. It's important when you're doing work with multiple holes on one item, not to go ahead and do them all at once. But, so we'll go ahead and get that started. And now let's do the rear portion. Then we can go ahead and tighten everything down on the car. So you can see that I actually took uh, the roof rack right back off. And the reason for that is I noticed after tightening everything up, you see how that washer head is actually all bent around the, uh, the bolt. So I went ahead, went inside, I've got uh, some extra washers there and I'll show you the washer that I ended up uh, uh, you know, coming out with here. This is actually about twice as thick as the washer that actually came with the rack. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it back on just using these thicker washers to make sure that the rack stays safely on the car. We now have the driver's side on, so go ahead and take a look. You can see that it mounts up quite nicely. We have a, uh, a real good gap right where the rubber pad is. It just goes onto the car super good. Now, next thing to do is do the passenger side. So I'll let you watch that. With that, we are all done. We've got the roof rack on the car, and overall, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Now, uh, there's a couple of things that I don't think are quite perfect. One of them would be that the plastic caps that cover the hole uh, that the screw goes through, 
Uh, two of them did crack and break, unfortunately, and I'm not totally sure that the uh, the manufacturer will be able to get me another. So uh, I might need to come up with a better solution for that. Otherwise, however, I think the car looks significantly better than it ever did before uh, without those roof rails. Uh, it definitely looks better than the Thule roof rack, although I thought that that was a pretty nice way to solve the problem of the sports not coming with a roof rack. But overall, I gotta say, I'm pretty happy with how it came out. And if there's enough daylight left, what we'll go ahead and do is grab a couple glamour shots and put those up behind the video. Thanks again for watching. Make sure you subscribe for more, and I appreciate it. <laughs>